Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John Coleman and I speak to the most fascinating people of all and stripes and, and, and Bill Jordan. Uh, <laughs> uh, but especially Bill Jordan, who is one of our, uh, as uh, some of these young kids say, one of our funnest people to talk to. I say that. So I'm, I'm hey, younger. Uh, I speaking of fascinating, I have an interesting uh, phenomenon that happened to, to me and to some of my relatives recently. We discovered a cousin from my father's, my grandfather's side of the family after, I, what is that, 70 years or more, 80, 80 some years. She found us on Facebook. She... She has the same last name as my grandfather, and she was doing that exploring kind of thing and oh, yeah. found people. She yeah. found uh, my cousin had set up a, a family website, a family mm. uh, Facebook site, and she it had the name on it, and she saw that. Absolutely fascinating to compare notes with her because she her her father was my granduncle. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, where I'm going with this is genealogy. Is right. you, and have you I never have met her heard before? That it's the biggest, uh, most popular hobby in uh, in the country, maybe in the world. John, so you never, never knew this person before? Did you know of her before? Uh, no. Wow. No. No, not at and all. That, that's pretty neat. My brother did the uh, the DNA thing through one particular company. You know, there's like, I don't know how many there are now. I mean, there's three or four that I know of, and there's probably more than that. Um, and he did it, and so he sent me his results, and I thought it was pretty fascinating, and I assumed, because I, you know, I'm not a genealogist, I assumed that my brother and I, given that we had the same parents, would have the same DNA. Well, I've been told by numerous people that that is not necessarily the case, just based on how DNA gets mixed up in the whole, you know, baby making process. So I decided to get my own done, and there were some variations. Really? Uh, yeah. So he came out like 25% German, 25% uh, UK, uh, something else. Anyway, so I'm, but I'm still thinking that's pretty cool. So I did my own. So I, I actually wrote it down here. According to the company I used, they say that I'm 40% German. We knew that we were at least 25% German, or figured we were, because our uh, maternal grandmother was full, was 100% uh, German. So anyway, yeah. but I turn out I'm 40% German, 17% uh, British Isles, and I'm told by them that it's not, there's no England. There's no English in me, but it's Scott, Irish, Welsh. So that side of uh, the UK. I'm 13% Italian, which I had no idea of any Italian lineage. 11% French, which I had no idea about. And 10% Scandinavian. Now, every guy I talk to who, when we talk about this subject of genealogy and all this stuff and DNA tests, when they find out there's even a hint of Scandinavian coursing through their veins, what image do we all oh, of imagine? Of course, it's yes. the Vikings. The Vikings, Vikings. Sure. Yeah. absolutely. I mean, you could be this much yeah. Scandinavian, and the guy's going to go Viking. Oh, ar, ar, ar. you know. So, you know, John, John and I are always behind your back. John and I was all talking about the fact that you know he's got this like Viking sense about him. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You'd yeah. look great in a horned helmet. I would look great in a horned helmet and some kind of animal skin. <laughs> I wonder if they make animal cargo shorts out of animal, animal skin. Anyway, 6% six six Eastern European or Slavic. And the one that really threw me was I am like 3% the Membe tribe from Sierra Leone of Western Africa. Really? Didn't <laughs> see that coming. Wow, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I find this, and, and then when this company went further back, like way back, there's some, how, however they figured it out, I mean, you know, far 
East Asia, like Asian Asian wow. in my lineage. So it's fascinating to me. I mean, we really are, we're all mutts. <laughs> we, we are all absolutely, we are human mutts. Mm. Yeah, well, that's true. You know, so um, it is fascinating to me because I used to talk about my mom and dad. My mom and dad really didn't know much as far as their ancestors. My dad told me, so no one ever talked about it. He says, I, I've never even thought about it myself until you guys are asking me about it. He remembered, even though we were raised in Virginia, he had a memory, a faint memory of seeing uh, somebody that he was told was his, maybe his great, maybe his grandfather or great grandfather who had been in the Civil War and they were missing an arm or a leg, which was quite wow. common, of course, during the time, but they were a Union soldier. So well, um, I, 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 I hate to I hate to burst your bubble, Olaf. But uh, Olaf, that wasn't that your your family sure, lineage sure. name, your middle name? Is that your middle name, yeah. Bill yeah. Olaf Jordan? Olaf. Yeah. yeah. That um, if you contact them and can say, really, I'm this percent of Scandinavian, and they they come back and say, well, maybe you aren't. <laughs> the reason I say that. The reason I say that is that one of my favorite shows on TV is Finding Your Roots. It's uh, the public service PBS. Uh, uh, I think I've thing. seen that. I yeah, think I've and, seen and they do, and, and they do a really extensive DNA and gene testing with all the expensive equipment. And I have a feeling that some of these uh, services, no offense, uh, are don't really get it really right. But in any event. I know that uh, there are some people probably afraid to do it because uh, they don't want the FBI picking them up. Uh, well, you know, that, that's happened. That's yeah. happened. Yeah, no. Uh, they do, they've done a DNA thing and, hey, this guy is related to, okay. And then, yeah, they, yeah, they have found people like that. I do think, and it's kind of borrowing from a comedian Brian Regan's riff about serving sizes, but I, uh, I wonder sometimes with these DNA tests that some guy's back in the main office, you know, in some big, you know, glass and steel structure uh, where these DNA headquarters are, where the guy goes, hey, uh, hey, Charlie, come here. Look, look what I told him this guy is. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's part of uh, the Membe <laughs> tribe in Africa. And he, hey, check this out. He's 13 percent. What do you think this guy is? You know, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I wonder if that's the case to the point of where uh, we were talking with friends this weekend about the whole DNA thing. And we were all really pretty fascinated by it. But I think my wife and I are going to, well, she had hers done a long time ago. And she basically, she's just all England. She's all English heritage. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're both going to use different companies and run it again. Mm -hmm. See if oh, it comes, see yeah, if it comes close. You yeah, because I think I think some of the- Otherwise some, it is some guy going, hey, Charlie, come here, let me show him. Well, let me, let me tell him what he is. Right. Yeah. And you know you're out there bragging your mom, and then you go to your your, your the spot in wherever it is that that people are from, and they'll say brother, okay. Unless you go there and they'll say here's brother Bill, uh, you won't know for sure. But they, they well, Bill, when you when you go to visit uh, Sierra Leone, I'm sure people are going to recognize you. <laughs> he just looks like doesn't he look like Grandpa? Where have you been? Where have you been? No, you know, he really doesn't. To me, he looks more Scandinavian. <laughs> I think that might, that might be the point. I you am know, more Scandinavian. I, I, the DNA is absolutely fascinating, but mm. I'm more interested in, and I've been with cousins, we've been uh, uh, trading stories. I'm more interested in the people and how they lived and what they did for a mm. living. Um, so we've been tracing, our, my cousins and I have been tracing uh, down stories of, uh, of our relatives, uh, long lost relatives, going back to uh, the Irish, uh, when all the Irish came over after the um, uh, potato famine potato in famine. the, what is it, early 1800s, 1840s, something like that. So, uh, you know, they landed where they landed and how they got, to, how they got a living and how the kids then moved around and, and built careers. It's a fascinating human story, I think, to, to know more about the people themselves. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I would love to know that. I, my, um, my brother's mother-in-law, rest her soul, 
uh, she, I mean, old school, she would go to like state capitals and go to the archives. And I mean, she by hand, the old school way, did their lineage back to like colonial times. It was wild. Yeah. And um, I, I would love to do that. When you stop and think about, yeah, we think about maybe consciously our grandparents uh, of, of whom I only knew my maternal grandmother. Um, but then you even think great grandparents and then you start thinking great, great and great, great, great and great, 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 great. And how far back that went and what were their stories? Yeah. What did they do for a living? What struggles did they have? What successes did they have? Man, I would love to know that. I just, well, our, in our family, the big, uh, uh, the big story is that my great grandfather Coleman owned a store on Broadway in New York City, this is before 1900, so 1875, 1880, something like that, owned a store on Broadway of New York City near Times Square, like wow. 41st Street. Wow. And of course, everybody says, oh, if we still owned that property today, we'd be millionaires. Well, his store was a leather goods store where he made saddles and buggy whips. Mm. <laughs> so it, it didn't last very long at all. No, but you know what? Yeah, Something in the that's DNA. So impressive to know. That's impressive just to even know that. But through the years, John, you've owned horses and you've been, it may be part of your DNA. Is that's that right? Yeah. Because uh, you, yeah. for a guy from the Bronx or Westchester, uh, owning horses would not necessarily be a natural thing. There must be something yep. in your. You your never background. know. Right. You never and, know. How and so many of us yep. know, like that's finding your roots, so many of us find out about uh, somebody who came on a ship that half the people died in, in steerage uh, because they weren't fed right and diseases and everything else. And somehow yeah. they made it here from the potato famine or from uh, a fleeing uh, uh, oppression in uh, Europe. And uh, their cousin or their brother never made it here. So we have a life because they took a chance and they made it as opposed to yeah. uh, the uh, somebody else who didn't make it. So if you go back far enough, you'll find somebody who came here to America, probably from Scandinavia or Sierra Leone or wherever, who had they not made that trip, you wouldn't be you. You'd be you'd be 100% Scandinavian. Hey, you know what? We can do this. It, 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 just think of the number of close calls you've had in your life, mm -hmm. whether it be Act, you know, traffic or whatever it might be. I mean, sure. absolutely close calls by the uh, by the difference of a second. You yeah. could be here or not. And think about our answer. How many? I mean, it's absolutely true. We are all. It's a miracle any of us are here. Wow. All right, guys. Uh, all I can say is that in the future, our progeny is going to look Ooh. back and say, "Those baby boomers, boy, did they have it." Easy. Look they at had that. Easy. They That's had it. mugs. They had, and they had these really, really they nice mugs. Books. They had everything. <laughs> guys, fun to talk with you guys, of course, always. Live your life. Forget your age. Embrace the food. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.